Tēnākoe, kia ora, and welcome to North Harbour Stadium. You guys, it's great to have you along here. We're like old buddies, aren't we? We've been watching the footy for three days now, and it's great to have you with us for the third place playoff, the first of our three finals games here from the Pacifica Youth Cup, and wonderful to have your company here on Sky Sport. Well, it's been two days so far of really intense play for these young under-18 players. But the main thing is it's great to have some rugby league live on another beautiful day in Tamaki Makoto. Nei rata miki ka koto katoa, mai ngā hauwe whaa for those of you from, from uh, Tamaki Makoto here in Auckland where the games are being played and right around the country and from the people or to the people of the Four Winds. Welcome to Sky Sports coverage of finals day. First up, it's the Cook Islands lining up against Fiji. I'm joined again by Laoli Monty Beatham. And finals day is something quite special. We've had a lot of respect for the way that these teams have played over the past couple of days, Monty. But uh, finals day is something special. and Everyone wants to uh, come out a winner. A warm welcome to you. Ho tenakwe. Malo les with four moa lelangi e mama. It's a beautiful day. I tell you what, it's been a big weekend for these young men. Played so many games of the great game in, you know, three days. That is epic work and multiple times as well. So it's all about today. The strategy that's been involved throughout the weekend uh, all comes to this climax, which is how you finish off your tournament. So looking forward to this one, Dale, and seat in the right next to you. Great uh, to have you along. Well, big ups too to the ground staff here. The track's in wonderful condition. And, of course, our Fijian squad lining up. I'll begin with their beautiful hymn that uh, acknowledges their people and their faith as the Cook Islands team make their way out onto the field too. Some of these young guys will have a chance to step it up. And when we look at modern-day players from the Cook Islands, there's plenty of, uh, of guns in here. Now, they'll be relying very much on Andre Sinabulu and David Kummer, the, uh, the standoff and halfback, too. They'll steer them around. The Tuiano brothers are in the front row and also uh, we've got some good players out wide. In particular, one to look out for is Waisaki Salimbo and uh, Joey Hennings. We've been doing just a little bit of pronunciation work on the Fijian squad, so if we falter to our Fijian cousins around the country, uh, it's not for want of trying. We're mindful of the uh, beautiful uh, pedigree and uh, whakapapa lines that connect these wonderful names. They've been a, a really good bunch to have along to Fiji and likewise with the Cooks. So good to have you along for the ride. Our first final coming up very shortly and then another just after one o'clock this afternoon. We'll wrap it up when Tonga line up against Aotearoa New Zealand Māori and the big final coming your way at around three o'clock. So plenty of rugby league. That bloke from Harcourt's been getting a lot of plugs actually every time the, uh, the camera pans a smiling face there. I'd like to see him with a rugby league jersey on, but see how he goes. So, As we start these uh, events, of course, the cultural connections are what it is all about. Uh, our Cook Island team lining up in uh, not dissimilar colours. They're wearing their white strip today. Here's Fiji. A warm welcome at Walmart.
wrecked by COVID. First the Delta, now Omicron variant is making its way around the world. We're very protective here in Aotearoa. And as such, the reason why we're observing strict protocols regarding numbers here at the stadium, uh, they are limited to 100 people. Had the gates been open, we would have seen a big crowd in here. There would have been a wonderful atmosphere as such as they were forced to do their footy and strut their stuff uh, with a limited crowd here. But your support at home, I'm sure, is resonating with them as we uh, look to get underway. Well, there have been some wonderful players from both countries over the years, worth noting before we get underway, because we're not quite sure who we are witnessing uh, on the rise. And when you look at the Cook Island players, just uh, picking out a few, I mean, there's Joey Manu, and there's Kevin Edel, uh, uh, Dylan Napa, uh, Charles Nicole on Clockstar, and uh, of late out of Parramatta, Marat and Kori, all very proudly from the Cooks. Fiji likewise, is Petro Sivadestenda and uh, Viliama Kiko, uh, Lottie Takiri. So we've got a lot of players. We're on, and this is finals footy here at the PYC Pacifica Youth Cup. Brent Newton is in control of the action. And again, these lads have decided to come out in similar colours. Well, I know we'll keep you tagged as best we can, Fiji, with the ball on the far side of the field. They'll just be wanting to make a statement after going head-to-head -head last night at 5 o'clock. As I say, only four points in it that day. So we'll be looking for some enterprising play. The Fijians guilty yesterday of maybe being a bit one-dimensional and one-out running, but I'm sure they would have looked at the tape last night as well and realised that they can do more with ball in hand as David Kummer works it down the left edge and Faonga, who is the halfback for the Cook Islands, makes the tackle on the far side of the field. Yeah, some wonderful Monty. names that you've mentioned there, Dal. Uh, both teams would be worthy and uh, they'd be heroes that have been there before them that have played in this jumper. So a lot of these guys will have aspirations of representing their country at the highest level possible. So today they get the chance. Maybe it might be the last, maybe be a start for a lot of them as well going forward. But uh, their chance after last night playing here, the last game, um, it's going to be interesting. And the first penalty of the afternoon. Uh, to Tima Kukiaini with the ball now 20 metres in it, just inside the Fijian half. It'll be a touch finder and picking up a few metres early on here as they look towards the northern side of North Harbour Stadium, QBE Stadium. Let's get themselves settled down. Big ups to some of the young people, two flag bearers and the like. Also want to make mention of a young touch judge. He's working the far side of the field. And in fact, is uh, Epiha Murukiti. He's just 14 years of age, wow. Epiha. And uh, he's the grandson of Ricky Muru, many of you might recall, former captain of the New Zealand Māori team and ex-Kiwi. Ricky, great character. Superb run, look at that, just bolting straight through the middle of Siapele Tito. What a great start, and you can't score them in any better position. Cook Islands up 4-0. Well, straight away we've seen um, some flamboyant football from uh, the Cook Island side, and last night it was a stop-start game. There's a lot of penalties involved, and it was very disjointed, but already we've seen what this uh, proud team can do. They started in the best possible fashion, which was a beautiful try. Regan Brown, who's been a, a big player for this team, comes across, he cuts him back. Uh, so Billy Tito, he knew what he was doing. He was scoring under the black dot. That's the first one for the day, Dale. It's a beauty as well, too. I've been hugely impressed with the back row of Regan Brown. He, he maintains good focus throughout the uh, 60 minutes. These are 30-minute halves that these young guys are playing. But they've had a stack of footy. And this time around, just shuffling across to his right-hand side with the drop-off on the inside. Sia Pelia says, thanks, bro, and steams straight ahead and is untouched as he charges across the line right underneath the black dot. And looking now for the conversion, this is Leon Richard. So as he captains this Cook Islands team, great start for the Cooks. But uh, they really just need to get themselves settled into action. That'll give them a great boost early on in the game, the Cook Islands as they return back to their positions. And it's uh, great to see. We've got JD on the sideline, and maybe we can get some thoughts from him today. Uh, the whole tournament's been played. JD is the tournament director and also chairs New Zealand Māori Rugby League. Good to have you on the sideline today, JD. Tēnā
No worries, and uh, welcome boys, and, and welcome to the Fano. And that's how you like your front rows to run, nice and direct, nice and straight. Good man. You talk man. about Rick Murray and uh, Dale, and uh, that's exactly how Rick used to run. Yeah, you're quite right there. He's a popular character, both on and off the field, Ricky Muri. And it's wonderful to see the uh, Fucker Papa Lions still staying well and truly connected here. Good de defensive effort by the big number 12 here for Fiji, Adia. But it's the Cooks in control. Palmerhall Brown is playing in the distribution role. And over the top there with a bullocking charge once again, making inroads. The Cook Island short side play for Aunga. Looking for the kick. Fiji should gather it. They have. They have the ball on the 40 metre line. And it is the kicker who will make the tackle. But there's been a knock on, a faux pas, and we've set a scrum with a Fiji feed. Well, that's a real shame, Dale, because I tell you what, shame for Aunga. He's doing some wonderful work out there with uh, a number of different players running lines and variations with the ball in hand. And that's what you want from your halves. And, you know, he's threatening the line, he's asking questions, and this Fiji inside is probably not as experienced as most playing this game. Uh, it makes it a lot harder for them. Remember, this is the third day. It's a, a tough one, and I can tell you now, the heat is still relentless. Yeah, it's, it was hot this morning, wasn't it? You came down from the north, I came up from the south. There's a kick over the top on the first tackle, which is an interesting tactic, one that could have paid off, but Tia Tia is in there to cover base for Cook Aurini. And so they'll have the ball and just try and work their way uh, around the outside with that run from the winger Potimali. We saw a beautiful try yesterday from Timothy Tiatia. So he's got wheels and he's got a very elusive way of carrying the ball. Great swerve and, and acceleration. Let's hope we see more of that here. Regan Brown, first receiver, one left. Nice little run here and good defense in the end on hitting the homes. He's had a good tournament so far. Jeffica Tuyano is the tackler. And now the, the Cooks shuffling along and then the drop off back on the inside again using the skittles of Siapele Tito. Bit of an arm wrestle in there from Usai Aria. His workload defensively is impressive. 25 is, well, we're not sure if they're brothers or cousins. That's uh, Josefa Tuyano to the back. And just a little slow to get to the ball and Regan Brown once again shines and delivers up for Faonga who scores in the corner. Well there was a mistake at the back there from Malakai Tama who thought he had the ball but Regan Brown wisely trailed him closely and when the little mistake bobbled the ball he was able to secure it, sort out his teammates who was well positioned and the little halfback runs it into the right edge and scores the second try for the Cook Islands. I've had my eye on Regan Brown. I've been watching him, especially in that last set, and the, the, the amount of times he had his hand on the ball or the amount of times he put himself in the position to help with the play, whether it be supporting, whether it be running a, a line on the inside or the outside, was very good indeed. He is not your traditional back row in terms of just a workhorse. He can do it all. He's even gone, gone in for the one or two pass plays as well. Regan Brown, what a future. You mentioned some big names there that have played for the Cook Islands, and this kid, uh, the way he's going, is on that trajectory as well. Well, part of the reason for this tournament is to provide a window for, uh, for agents and for clubs and their spotters uh, to pick up potential. And if they're looking for potential, look uh, no further than this young back rower from the Cook Islands. He's got it all going on at the moment, early in the final. And now the conversion attempt 25 out and just a couple of metres in on the far side for Leon Richards. It's a tough proposition. Let's see how he goes with this one. He gets plenty of height on it and power direction just lacking. But uh, we have a 10-0 scoreline here. And, and the Cook Islands have started the game as, as well as anyone could hope for. JD, you're down there sideline right now, mate. How hot is it? I mean, we've got the benefit of being a little bit higher with the breeze coming through. What sort of conditions are the players enduring? Yeah. Yeah, now thanks for that, Monty, but uh, yeah, it is uh, sweltering and uh, the players are hot, but I just think the Fijian tactic are kicking on the first tackle and the fullback not taking the ball on the full. You know, we, we teach all our players at uh, Tane Faro to take the ball on the full, don't let the oval ball bounce. Well, it always comes with very warm, Monty, very warm. And the Cook Island starting off again in a classy way through Titor comes down the left edge, northern touchline. Leon Richards 
sees a bit of a hole and seizes his opportunity, charging forward now almost to the 40 metre line. Pano Hall Brown is instrumental too in the direction that this team travels. And Fiji, surprisingly, when they have had the ball, have decided for quite ambitious tactics, the kick on the first tackle, perhaps an example. This is early in the tackle count as well for the Cook Islands. And again, we can see some skill and good ma uh, game management from young Shane Faongo, who scored the try just a few moments ago. 10-0 scoreline, Fiji need to settle things down here. Field position is not in their favour. You mentioned game management, I think that's the key. They're already with the kicking game, kicking too early or kicking short, this Fiji inside. It's going to be a long uh, 60 minutes against this Cook Island side. Chain Fong is really showing with ball in hand, he's a threat. But game management, kicking for the corners and making sure his chase is there, superb. Well, slow to his feet this time around, uh, Tuyano. And again, we're seeing Fiji trying this tactic they perhaps just don't want to play down in their end of the field comes back to Timothy Teatea lovely running style upright and fluid as he glides across the park setting themselves in here as the wing comes across for a bit of action Tatana they're really making Fiji work and perhaps more importantly, think about what they are doing as Dickie Terepo carries the ball forward. He played second row yesterday. Speaking of second row, here's a, a darting run from Elvin Chong Nee. It's curtailed just outside the 30 metre line, but the Cook Islands held bent on attack after attack. And there's Regan Brown looking for the cutout ball. It was smart thinking by Regan. That's play on. Referee comfortable with where it went, Brent Newton. Still in control of the football, the Cook Islands. So some enterprising play on show here from these young guys, from that proud island nation. Here's Brown. He has a charge towards the line, comes up just a few metres short. Danger time here for Fiji. Hell bent on getting under and from the dummy half position is Nate Panahor Brown and he has done enough on his own. It's a try that should not have been scored, but it's has been, and uh, that's showing the intent that the Cook Islands have come out into the final with here this morning at North Harbour Stadium. Well, this Cook Island side is nothing like the side they were yesterday. They are poles apart. I tell you what, I've really been enjoyed. There's been a few strategic changes through the team in terms of where players are positioned, which is one thing, but they're really playing on the same page. They're pushing in numbers. And once again, I'll mention his name, Regan Brown. The engine on this kid is amazing. He is absolutely everywhere. Maybe a little bit too ballsy, I should say, down that short side throwing that pass. But I'll tell you what, uh, then he got around and he put it up through the middle for that man. Panahal Brown to score a try. Lovely stuff too. Leon you know, Richard, well, this will come down to you, JD. Uh, obviously, you've been watching Regan as well, but Panahal Brown did as much as any rake could do from close range. Another good try for the Cook Islands, JD. Yeah, good school and, and good... Um, Monty talks about game management and uh, he's got, you know, he's the type of player that you've got to get the ball in his hands and, and, and they're actually up-tempo at the moment and, and game four, day three for the Fijians and, you know, it's starting to take its toll, I guess. So uh, he's, he's hoping they can get some football and play some football because we, we know they've got some flair. They've got some flair. What are you making of these early kicking tactics in the set? Monty, we've seen it twice now and, and it hasn't worked. I think regardless of what code you play and what um, format you play, that you realise that position is key and, and you can't kick it away. Because defending is going to be hard, but in saying that, now they get the chance in the great field position deep in the Cook Islands half. It's a good chance for them to, to show what they do well, which is running with the ball. That's a nice sportsmanship on show there once again just a difficult one there for Hidden Homes to take but it does set up a nice opportunity here for Fiji so about 20 meters out here with the scrum feed and, uh, Fiji Bati as well they get wonderful support and big ups to all of our Fijian community who will be tuned in so proud of their young athletes and their national pride is, is uh, uh, undoubted as we see the big number three, Waisaka Sambiao. It's good to see him out there today because I'm sure he was injured late in the game uh, last evening. 
But uh, he takes his position in the starting lineup. Fiji now working back towards center field. Dennis Rafara making life difficult for them, the big prop forward. As they are not spread perhaps as deep as they might like to be. Fiji in possession. This time it's Tuyan Hope. Out to the right. Api Kuriso is another player too who's really making his mark in the NRL as we see Fiji probing down the right edge this time around. Good defensive work from Tedepo. Wind up time for Fiji in a one out charge this time from Aria. Out the back door they come, across to the fullback who puts it up. This is a thumber. The chase is on, the ball's down. Chance for Fiji. And I think that they might have scored here. Referee Brett Newton checks with his touch judges and says all is well. Just what Fiji needed. They have bounced back with a try of their own. Colombia Sanga, very good try. I tell you what though, that, that's that's what you do in terms of game management. With the ball in hand, it was a little bit better from Fiji, but uh, that time they put the kick up high. You always a chance when you're contesting 50-50 uh, chance, especially when you've got high flyers like the Fijian who are renowned for the aerial tactics. Uh, that time there, they had plenty of numbers in the picture, so what that means is that they can jump on the ball. They get up nice and high. Tia Tia comes across. I thought he probably should have taken that. He had that in his possession, but nonetheless, there was a few more Fiji Fiji and boys to jump on that. And I'll tell you what, that's going to do wonders for their confidence, uh, JD. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, we know of it. We know of our Fijian brothers that, uh, you know, those outside backs, you know, Kenny Nagus and all the uh, all the Fijian wingers in the NRL now. And, and that could be a tactic because we're, we're a bit critical of the option taking when they apply the kick, but uh, the execution was right on the money. Kalim Bosanga is in, and that gets Fiji just a little closer to the target. 16-6 scoreline here. Game one of three finals from the Pacifica Youth Cup. Live here on Sky Sport from North Harbour Stadium. Dale and Monty and JD, John, of course, tournament director, convener of the panel that organised the event under very trying circumstances. And uh, John also is the chair of New Zealand Māori Rugby League. Great to have him on the commentary team here this afternoon. So Hwane Akavi is responsible for the kickoff. Let's see what Fiji can have or offer off the back of that try and already there is a strip so they'll march downfield through a penalty no doubt will be kicked towards the southern touchline here at the stadium so they need to kick this ball out and get on with it they take too much time they slow it down remember they've got the ball so the opposition that is defending that's when you, you, you get the juice out of them a little bit too slow and casual from the Fijians right now of course, with the uh, changes to the laws governing the game here in, in New Zealand coming into effect in 2022, we see an acceleration of pace across the board. Talking with Alan from the Referees Association, if the ball goes out, of course, it's a restart with a play the ball 20 metres in from where it goes out, rather than the setting of a scrum. I know you were keen to, to see a tap restart to keep the, uh, the momentum going. I'm only saying that because I'm not playing the game. <laughs> the game is so fast, so brutal these days, and these young men that are playing, it's just, it's just a credit to them, and JD and everyone's been able to put this on. It's coming around from the back. <laughs> young guys, not uncommon to see the long strips of Malakai Dama. Tuana once again. King to go forward. That's a good run from him. It's showing purpose. The back row is Kamar onto the bird of Sinian Bulla. And a test to here for Tia at the back, and he's steady as a rock. Takes it with great confidence and skill. He is 12 metres out from his own line. And we'll look for runners to come in and get them out of the danger zone. This is Tahtaina. It's a learning experience for Fiji. Obviously, probably the, the less experienced out of the, two, the six teams that are here. But I tell you what, they are trying, and there have been different strategies put in place, and they seem their improvement from last night. But you know, they're they're a long way back in terms of what they need to do to, to get up to the levels of the these other youngsters that have been playing for a long time. That's not going to help their cause either. March down the field now. It's this uh, Cook Island team a chance, and we know what they're like in good ball. 
Very yeah, good today. Brent Minton, saying that's higher than I'm willing to accept. That brings Schaefer all up. Chooses to go to the southern touch line. Not short of the halfway line, easy 15 metres or so for them. Now they'll mount their attack and a full set of six at the Cook Islands disposal. The halfback will get us underway. Runner here is Ethan Angamolo. Angai Malo. My uh, apologies. So it's Brown who is a first receiver and a probing little run here full of purpose and direct running. Another penalty. Melvin Chong Ni knows but one way at the moment here for his squad and earns a penalty right in front of the post. Chong Ni spent time out in the centres as well, equally as adept in the back row position. It's nice to see these young players who can play a number of positions and play it equally as well. So they're well set at the moment and looking for try number four. Here's the Cook Islands, a little bit of show and go to ground eight metres out from the line. Dummy half work for Akavi. Hit up time for Tito. And Saipeli's already shown his abilities from close range. This is dangerous here for Fiji. Spread deep and wide through the right-hand side, through the hands of Regan Brown. Now onto Fa'ongo. Tiatia comes in from the back. Speed to burn and look at him go. Wonderful try from Timothy Tiatia. He knew what he was doing, where he was going. A purposeful run that comes up trumps. Well, I'm glad he got that ball down. Had some work to do to put it down because he had many outside him unmarked. But that's a beautiful try from one corner to the other corner through lovely sets of hand, balls out in front. Decoy runners, that is what we've been looking for. That is a team effort. We saw here at the breakdown, Gavi goes the same, same way. Egan Brown passes it back to the setup here. The width, the shape is really nice. They overran it slightly on the edge, and that's probably why Tia Tia decided to run with the ball himself. He got over the line, he backed himself, and he was too big, too strong there, JD. Yes, he was, and uh, too fast too, but... Uh, but it's the back-to-back -back penalty that uh, cost the Fijians just a lack of an experience there and late in the tackle count and conceding a uh, a penalty in the back-to-back -back sets. And um, yeah, he's been good, Timor Tietia. He's been one of the standouts for the Cook Islands team and uh, been very impressive. He really punched on at pace, didn't he? And a nice lead-up work once again from Brown, whose praises we've been singing fairly strongly already. Hats off as well to Fa'onga. We've uh, identified... His game management is uh, the cornerstone of his contribution here to the Cook Islands. Now we have uh, Wani Akavi, who will have the kicking duties 10 metres in from the far side of the field. I think uh, he really hit it well enough. For a moment, thought it might have gone through. Not to be. 26. Good scoreline here for the Cook Islands. They started with a hiss and a roar. When you look back, Tito was in after just two minutes. And then Fa'onga uh, had that wonderful try skirting around the outside after the offload from Brown uh, to pick up a try. Panaho Brown from close range and now Tia Tia. So the scoreline is booting out here for Fiji. And they uh, really need to shore up their defence to stop the rot. That's good one through uh, Kulumbasanga with the kick into the end goal, but they've been very impressive, the Cook Islands. Uh, a couple of nights ago, Monty, when we're calling the game against New Zealand and Māori, they were leading 18-14 at the half-time break too. So, you know, they're there or thereabouts, and even though they might be playing in the first of our finals for third place, the reality is that uh, they've been improving right throughout the three days, and isn't that what footy should be about in tournament play? Yeah, look, that's right. Strategy in tournament play is a little bit different. You know, if you play for one-off matches and you rest for the, the following week, you put it all out there, but um, this team, compared to last night and today, it, it poles apart. Uh, very well-balanced side, and, and when you just make those tweaks to players in good positions, as we've seen there, another great run. Uh, you seem to see them at the absolute best, which is now. Which is now. You've got to be mindful too that they play bugger all footy as well. Uh, as we see a, a ball down the right hand side, there's a player down in back play, and that'll cause some problems too because they'll uh, be outnumbered. As I'm sure it's a Fijian player who is injured, and he's getting some attention now. Um, what if the ref is aware of that? Fiji right. just need to steady the ship. And we'll get a uh, 
a break here for a moment. It's tough. The heat certainly doesn't help. And these guys can be dragging the chain after playing a lot of footy these last three days. I guess, in a way, injuries are part of what you'll expect uh, from the coaching staff. JD, down to you. You're closer to the action, but uh, a few lads doing it tough at the moment. Yeah, most definitely. You know, when you've got a, uh, a Cook Island legend like Henry uh, Tudu and he's, he, he's sponging himself down and having a drink of water and putting an ice back on his head, so, uh, you know, and he's only, uh, he's only running the water. I'm just... You know, it's pretty hot down here, but uh, yeah, and it just a uh, crucial part of the game, six minutes out from the break, and uh, you know, the, the, the cookies are uh, looking pretty strong, and, and Fiji got to, got to hang tough and try and keep them scoreless for the remainder of the half, and uh, yeah, just dig, dig deep, but uh, very, very warm boys, but uh, two games to come, it's uh, it's going to be a uh, another very warm day. JD, how experienced is this um, Fiji inside? Because I tell you what, the effort has been superb, but I just, I just wonder if they, they lack that rugby league experience across the board. Yeah, a little bit of that. Uh, the physicalness is, uh, you know, the, the, the big forward pack in, in our game, Monty, as you know, you've got to go forward and work off the back of go forward and momentum. So they are struggling a little bit there. They've got big hearts, though, but uh, the 11, Waisaki uh, at Rotorua Boys High School, uh, you know, first 15 and that, so... Uh, yeah, they, they, they're in loving the experience. And Steve Smith and Manil Kumar, the organisers of the, uh, the Fijian campaign, you know, the, you know, I think they're the only team that's got a, a chaplain, a physio, a doctor, and 26 sponsors. Well, that uh, speaks volumes. Well, they're very organised, so they're loving the experience. It speaks volumes, doesn't it, of, uh, of the backroom work that is involved. Here's one of the standouts, Regan Brown, but the pass was deemed forward. Uh, I guess playing these sweltering conditions is the way perhaps a Pacifica Cup should be. I mean, you can expect to play a Pacifica Cup in snow, could you? Uh, absolutely. You? It, it takes me back to the days of Pacifica Cup in Carlo Park, which we may be into yesterday. Uh, for the people at home who've experienced that and the drums and the crowds, and unfortunately we can't have the crowds here today, but luckily we're treated to this coverage uh, for the Sky viewers at home and they're able to see uh, the young stars of the future come through, but it, it's been good. I mean, that's the way they play. They, they play with a uh, reckless abandonment. They play to express themselves and show the X factor that you have as a Pacific multiplayer. So uh, they get to do that on, on the biggest stage. Well, these icons of rugby league that we alluded to early in our coverage today must serve as an inspiration to realize, look, I might come from small town New Zealand, but so did Joseph Mano. I think he grew up in Tokoroa. Uh, Televano is another example, and so you can certainly make the world stage and make a huge impact in this code if you've got the goods, willing to learn, and that's perhaps the most important thing. Obviously, the training is important, but you, mm. to go to the mm. top, you really need to be a student of the game mm. and understand your position very clearly. What would you say of the impact of success for a guy like Joseph Munn, who's rated as one of the best players in the world now, for these young Cook Island players? Oh, that they know that someone like Joseph Mone has played in those colours and they know that uh, they've got aspirations of playing these colours and potentially the New Zealand colours for those that are uh, applicable for that. But, you know, Joey Manu is probably, we still haven't even seen the best of him. He's going to be one of the ex absolute legends of the game. Big in stature, big in mana, yeah. big, in, big in everything. And um, it's great to have him as one of our key players. We touched on it yesterday, how the coronavirus has denied these guys in the top form of their careers. Uh, the opportunity to play in the national strip. And when we look back at uh, great teams, Kiwi teams, I think we need to factor in that for two years now, perhaps even three, uh, at the peak of their careers, they haven't been able to uh, grace the international stage. That's a real disappointment for them. But as we look back in history at great players, uh, that certainly needs to be factored in. Oh, absolutely. You talk about the, the greatest names, but then also some of the greatest that are yet to come, which are some of these kids, you know, that, that miss out on playing uh, rugby league or, or rugby. Uh, you know, we saw the Condor Sevens uh, the other week, but in particular this game that I love, which is rugby league. And when you don't get to play games often or regularly, which is sad, and then you get to have five in three days, <laughs> you've got to take it because uh, that's why we love it. And this is where the Fiji squad must be very, very mindful. They're in trouble here. They are in trouble once again, and the Cook Islands, well, they 
put another dagger in the heart of the Fijian Rugby League effort. It's the back rower. I think it's Regan Brown. Well, if anyone deserves a try, it's Regan. He has been so consistent across this three days of the tournament. And a score in the final is uh, something that he deserves. And uh, the build-up to that really opened the door for him. But he still had a bit of work to do, as you can see. He's a class act. Well, first of all, let's mention uh, Timothy Tietia, who's a class act in his own right. Yesterday put on a couple of massive shots to, to stop um, some tries that were certainties when we see what he's like with the ball in hand, a gifted athlete. But uh, you mentioned him before, Regan Brown, he's been wonderful. If they had GPS and in time uh, when they play uh, higher honours and play for clubs uh, in the NRL or, or so on, you get the GPS. I tell you what, I don't think anyone runs more or clocks up more Ks in Regan Brown. He is selfless in terms of making sure he's there to help individuals in his team or do the right thing for himself. Love it. So we are looking for the conversion from McCarvey. And we'll go over to, to JD. Maybe he knows a bit more about Regan's background than us. He's been in contact with the teams. Not overly forthcoming with information about some of the players at times, but... Uh, that's OK. He's uh, a real talent, this young back rower there, JD. He is. He's a worker and um, he's uh, he's putting in a big effort and his, his skill set is, is, is matching his effort. But um, you talk about the uh, the Cook Island uh, connection. Let's, let's not forget, you know, Tukaroa, you're talking about Joey Manu and the, the Pacific Club down there. You know, Willie Ford, a good friend of ours, Forest Lands. You know, the Daniels family, there's been a lot of good footballers come out of the uh, the Tukaroa region. And just, just on, a, on a side note, Joey Manu's mum, Māori, Ngāpui, and he's playing for Māori, New Zealand Māori and North Stars also. Beautiful. Well, we're all related, aren't we? The Cook Island Māori and, uh, uh, and those... That's right, we're all Polynesians. Yep, we all come together. And big ups to our viewers down in the tall timber town of Tukaroa. Always proud of the efforts that uh, come out of there, both in, in both codes too, to be honest, in rugby and rugby league. But the Cook Islands have a very strong connection as a people to Tokoro. Of course, many moved there to work in the timber industry, and Kinley's Mill and the like. So here's Fiji. As the clock counts down to half time, it's been a sensational first half effort here from the Cook Islands, up by 20 points. Can Fiji get across the line and give them just the fillip of enthusiasm for their work coming up in the second half. This is according to Asuva. He's wrapped up five metres out from the try line through the hands. Now they've got numbers here if they can get the pass through. That ball's gone down, but it's play on it. No, knock on. For a moment there, I thought the Cooks had put the ball away. And referee Brent Newton pulls the curtain down on the first half of our first final here at the Pacifica Youth Cup. Great to have you with us on Sky Sport. A bit of hip-hop dancing from the ball boys on the sideline as well. I hope you're enjoying the action. <laughs> uh, that's what I think it's, it's all about. TikTok, isn't it? Uh, it's a, see, Monty? It has to be. You're showing your age, Monty. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Beautiful day here at North Harbour Stadium. Not so beautiful if you're Fijian Rugby League supporter because their boys are down by 20. But, hey, we've got a full half of action still to come. Glad you could join us here on finals day from North Harbour Stadium. It's the Pacifica Youth Cup on Sky Sport. We'll have a look at those tries and roll them through for you in just a moment. Stay with us. It's a beautiful day here at North Harbour and on Sky Sport.
Kia ora no. Welcome back. It's a 20-point split here in the first of three finals at the Pacifica Youth Cup. The Cook Islands have been really impressive here in the finals. These two teams met late in the evening last or last evening, and for them to come out and just hit the ground running, it's a real credit to the attitude and indeed the preparation that's gone on behind the scenes. Glorious day, a hot sweltering day here on the North Shore and uh, the stadium in wonderful nick. Let's have a look how the tries came and it uh, wasn't long before a surging run from Saipele Tito. The drop off on the inside ball was from Regan Brown who's been one of the standout players and uh, t uh, they go from strength to strength. Another good try coming up here in a moment. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, we're talking about kick management. It was Regan Brown that come through. Look, he was there on song and of course as you do, Faongo uh, was chasing. That's the key to this. More people in the picture, the more chance of getting things done. This is Nate Panoho. Brown tries that coaches cringe at because uh, the rakes are always keen to get in with burrowing efforts from close range. This is Fiji's only try of the first half, and it was from a crossfield kick. A little bit of confusion there. The ball is uh, dropped, really, I guess, from Tete, who went to get it, and Colin Bosanga was successful for Fiji. This is a, a lovely effort. Look at the speed, pace, and acceleration of this young guy. He just goes puts his foot down, and it's the old pedal to the middle. And uh, He's been good to you, too. I oh, think they wonderful. overran him a little bit, so he um, just put the foot down and backed himself. But uh, this instance, again, uh, Regan Brown doing what he does best, and Tietia again, uh, you know, Tietia and Regan Brown, both names that have been popping up really well in this first half, and they've been uh, combining well to this uh, Cook Island teams. Now we're starting to see the fruits of their labour and seeing how good they are when they're all on the same page and... and singing off the same hymn sheet, and that seems to be what we've been seeing in that first half, Dale. We'll be announcing a tournament team later in the day, and I'm, I'm you know, uh, pretty confident that both will feature there. Uh, whether or not they make the actual team, well, that uh, uh, awaits to be seen, but uh, certainly they've put their hand up credential-wise. Both Regan, Tia Tia, there have been some standout players as well. We probably haven't mentioned Andre uh, Sinembula, uh, who is contributing here for Fiji and Shay Faonga, who continues to impress for the Cook Islands. Thanks to JD, who shared that information regarding the, the uh, Cook Islands uh, and Fijian squads, but it, what's going on in the background to get these teams together. Uh, they're from all parts of the country, Fiji, JD? Yeah, they are, and um, Wellington, Christchurch, you know, and uh, well, as a pack initiative we're reaching out to the rest of the mutu so it's not just you know Auckland based and there's nothing wrong with our Auckland based whanau that's where it's a lot of it start and, and you would remember the Pearl organisation and, uh, and and we're reaching out to be inclusive you know Northland I know Nui and, and Tonga have done some good work in Nui and then we've got the Christchurch uh, you know based uh, Pacifica Cups and that they have down there so um, it's about exposure and giving those opportunities. Well, there's been a dearth of local rugby league, JD, if we can stay with you for a moment early in the second half. John is the convener of the tournament as far as the Pacific Altero Collective. Um, the, the decision to go for an 18s tournament, what was the driver of that going forward, JD? Well, well if you can imagine this, boys, we, we had seven grades planned. We had... Our, our girls, we had uh, 14, 16s, 18s, and our tummer of our boys was uh, 13, 14s, 15s, and 17s in October of 2021. And, and COVID, as you've talked about, um, disrupted those plans. So we just rolled it over as best we can to give these kids a, an opportunity and, you know, to have 12 games on Sky and have their colours and their flags. And so we rolled it over from last year's 17s in 2021 to, uh, to 18s in, uh, in January 2022. We know that a number of the uh, guys who were to perform are already in Australia. For instance, I think the Tongan Connections were saying that there were eight of their guys picked to play in this tournament who actually now are uh, lining up training with the SG ball teams across the Tasman. We might comment on that in a moment, but we'll just keep our eye on this for a, a, a couple of seconds, please, JD. John Devonshaw uh, with us on the sideline today. Crossfield kick this time around uh, might be successful and indeed it looks as though it is so some decent tactics and uh, acknowledging 
the creator is the number six. Andre Sinni and Buller were giving him a bit of a plug a few moments ago uh, while we await that conversion attempt. Maybe we can just stay in that vein, please, JD. Uh, many of these young guys are, have already uh, attracted the attention of the talent scouts. Most definitely, and um, there was the likes of Jacob LeBan from, from, from Wellington, and he, he's gone over to the Warriors. And we, we lost uh, 12 players from the tournament uh, because of the timing that have gone over to uh, NRL and trials and sign with clubs. So, so that's what it's about, um, guys. And you know, you know, Monty, you've been there, done that, and, um, and it's just a fabulous opportunity. Uh, you know, career uh, prospects, but also wearing your nation's colours. Well, there's uh, no more proud moment than that. And uh, many who, who won't go on to careers or even opportunities to play as in the uh, open age grades in the Fiji Strip mm. will look back in life, Monty, and say, so, uh, hey, I remember pulling on the jersey and being part of the national anthem and on TV, on Sky Sport, way back when I was 17, 18. Absolutely, Dale. There's levels to everything, but the, the fact that these kids over this uh, three-day period had the chance to do that is is something they'll remember for a very long time because it could be the catalyst for what they built after this, you know, that, that little time in that jumper and uh, on TV could have been the, the big difference or someone's watching, someone is always watching so that someone could just very much be their, their parents or their family or loved ones that, that care for them and they get more joy out of it than seeing uh, than sometimes some of the players. Well, I've got a very dear uh, Fijian friend, Alameda Patterson and I went to their whare on the way home last night and just as you'd hope for in a Fijian whare, there were three curries on Monty. Mm. Yes, mate, there was the lamb, the beef and the chicken curry and plenty of chilies chopped up in it as well. Some raw fish, Monty, just as you're on. Hadn't no, met the curries. No carver. Hadn't met the curries. No, no carver there, but uh, <laughs> there was certainly a whole lot of uh, of buller and good times. I like their cooking, uh, our Fiji and Farno. Beautiful people. You've been up there to play footy over the years, have you, Monty? I haven't played footy up there, but I've been up there to uh, try out the carver and uh, other sort of, um, you know, delicacies of the, the Fijian islands. But just the beautiful people they are, um, you know, and, and, and the way they look after you and embrace you when you come. You know, funny thing, uh, I don't know if you remember, but Graham Norton took a nines team yes, up there. And, and they um, won it. And they won the tournament. Now, that team had Steve Kearney, had JK in it. Uh, Joe Vangana. Yeah, and... Um, Henry Paul. Hey. You've done your homework. Logan Swan. There was there was a number of players in, in that title, and they we ended up the following year uh, winning the title again. Well, we, I went up with uh, Greg Smith because he does mostly rugby now uh, commentary, and the reason being, New Zealand League sent us up the chair at the time to work on Fiji Radio, and rugby league was in its real infancy up there, and the broadcasters on Fiji Radio were older men with very deep Fijian voices. And they call the rugby like this. You know that. The ball is out now and here they come. And of course me and Greg get out there with that sort of flamboyant Aussie keeping yes. smile up. Look, oh, look over here. Here they come. And uh, so we ended up working up there on Fiji radio. It was a real hoot. And of course the success was fantastic. One thing sticks in my mind too because after the Kiwis won the nines we're in the bus, and it's unusual for media guys to be invited onto the team yeah. bus. I respect that. You know, you have to keep yourself some Hello. distance. Hello. But uh, Coach Graham Norton said, no, no, come on the okay. bus with us back to the hotel. And so we're in there. They just won it. They're on a high. And uh, all the boys, it was, it was Kerwin says, hey, boys, just remember, when we get back to the hotel, be humble. Rumble! They said, rumble! <laughs> oh, it was a hoot. Here we go, then. No, I'll just have to keep at it. The cookies again mounting a challenge. 26 points to 10. And now the cooks again setting themselves this time to Angemalo. And the penalty right in front of the posts. This young fella, um, Akave, I think I was singing his praises last night too, Monty. He's been really neat. I just really like the way that uh, he plays, contributes, steers his ship. Peru Donaldson scored a good try last night, and he'll do it again here. Look, he's a powerful runner, and he has to be watched like a hawk. And uh, sadly for Fiji, they didn't.
keep their eye on him. And he uses his big frame and strong drive off his thighs to push himself across the line far out. And 30 points to 10 here. Cook Island's really making a statement here. Uh, well, I was about to say this afternoon, but it's still this morning. And Peru Donaldson's been one of their best. Yeah, when you look at the build of um, Kalani Peru Do Donaldson, it's, it's very hard to tackle him. The taller guys or the lanky guys, they give you their tackle height or they give you a target to, to hit, but there really is no target. When you've got good feet, you've got to swerve, and uh, you can manoeuvre um, as swiftly and as uh, brilliantly as he does, it makes it hard to tackle, especially that close to the line. He's the young guy. He's had a good tournament. Wale We'll come down to you in a moment too, JD. It's great to have you working with us on the sideline in touch with the connections. You mentioned Henry Tudor. There are others behind the Cook Islands effort. Perhaps deserve some, uh, some note. We were saying as well, JD, while we await this conversion attempt, that if you were able to swing open the gates, I reckon there would have been you know, hundreds, if not thousands, who have come in and support these six teams. As it turns out, they have to... Watch from home, 30-10 scoreline. John Devonshire with us at the Pacifica Youth Cup. He's sideline. Yeah, most definitely, uh, Dale. It's, it's about the cutler and the, and the energy they bring. And, the uh, you know, we've, we've seen even the players sing hymns in the stands. And, you know, very proud moment for uh, the players and their, their whanos. And, yeah, and, and it adds a, adds a colour, you know. We, we don't like to talk about 2017 in the World Cup because we, we didn't go the best as in, in the Kiwi side. But... The, the colour and the vibrancy that the Tongans and the, and the Samoans and it brought to the game was uh, was huge. And, uh, yeah, and, that, and that's part of it. And um, they also bring a good lunch. <laughs> you, probably, you probably didn't want to mention the Fijians, did you? Uh, that nightmare of 2017 as well. But, uh, wow. It's yeah, there was another one too. And, you know, it was, it was just approaching 12 o'clock, so I thought it was about lunchtime. Yeah, starting to rumble. All yeah. this talk of curries and kava, it's and making rumble. me hungry, eh, JD? <laughs> yeah, oh, mate, yeah. I'll be back in a minute, boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a character, all right. 2-0 that result was, eh, Fiji over New Zealand. A very unusual uh, test scoreline. Gee. Down there in Wellington, I was calling that game. That sounded the death knell for uh, David Kidwell, who was doing his best, but uh, they just didn't seem the harmony needed at that time in the camp. Still get another chance to roll around when next the World Cup comes around. 30 points to 10. And the Cook Islands looking to go away with it even further. That's a powerhouse run from Telepo. Has shown his versatility yesterday was in the second row today, working out wide. Well, they're looking a bit gassed at the moment, Fiji. Fair enough. It's been a long weekend. Yeah, the way it's turned out, Tiki Tirupo hasn't had much of a chance to show what he's about. But I tell you what, yesterday he was impressive. And the day before that, I think he's a kid of the future. New Zealand under-16s. He's down there at St. Kent. And equally at home in the centres or on the, on the edge. He's got a wonderful future. And I, I dare say he's got a bit of leadership about him too, JD. Yeah, he has. He's, he's actually the uh, the captain or the vice captain of of the team, and um, he he's one of the players uh, that, that we've identified to put his hand up for that merit team. So um, you're right on the money there, boys. Colin Basanga doing some fine work to score a try. We're looking at uh, six tries to two. And this scoreline kick over the top, bounce important. It's the Cooks who come up with it. Scramble, but then a knock on just as they went to ground. So Fiji get a chance to uh, take the ball in here, feed the scrum, and a knock on from Cook Aideni. Well, the kicking game's been working for them still. I probably wouldn't have kicked it that way, but if, uh, as we've said all along, the kick is as good as it's chase, and that time you had plenty of people. Bearing down, could hear the footsteps coming. There was a little bit of a, a mishap from uh, the Cook Island team. Now it's their chance to have a bit of a go. Would love to. Well, the ball's just uh, fallen into the hands of yeah. Fa'ola. He's got a fend on and a runner on the inside. And this is smart. This is a pearler. Who is it? It's Tim Tiatia. 
Goes deep into the end goal. Puts it down for a try that came against the run of play. That's what happens in rugby league sometimes. Uh, uh, momentum can shift at the twink of an eye. And this time Tia Tia makes no mistake and takes full advantage. Uh, that's what it's all about. I think there was about five or six boys embracing and cuddle and uh, they didn't want to let go. Big smiles on their face. And those are the memories you have playing with your brothers uh, and playing against some of your brothers too because quite often it can be mate versus mate. Aonga makes a step, and uh, we've mentioned a lot of names throughout the day, but uh, this man as well, he's been very, very good, Timothy Tiatia. Nice balanced runner, didn't even need to put the ball in two hands, the swerve, put it down, look at that, boom. <laughs> Try celebration as well. Been practicing that one too. Been watching Gunsmoke or Bonanza. Cut it out, he wouldn't. Bonanza. He wouldn't even know what Gunsmoke or Bonanza <laughs> is, would he, JD? I heard about Bonanza. I've never seen it. He wouldn't know who Hoss Cartwright was. He wouldn't know. Hoss. Hey, Hoss Cartwright, you look a bit like Hoss Cartwright. <laughs> yeah, in the front. <laughs> Get on. Do you know much about the young fella, Tia Tia? Yeah, no, he's uh, yeah, he's, he's he's a real talent and and. Um, Henry uh, tipped them off on uh, Friday night and uh, Friday uh, first game, and, and he said, "Watch this kid, JD." And um, and I've been very impressed. Timor, as he's known as, Timor, can do it all. But uh, you know, you, you've got to feel for the Fijians. It's, it's going to be a tough uh, back end of the game in terms of you know first tackle. You scrum the, you get it, and you turn the ball over, and you're standing underneath your post. So uh, it's, it's it's all going to be in the top six inches now for our Fijian brothers and. Uh, He's hoping they can uh, you know, dig deep and, and finish strong because uh, yeah, it's, it's been, been a tough three days. I don't know if you've got a uh, thermometer down there, but it'd be interesting to know what the on-field temperature might be. It feels pretty sweltering up here as the uh, sun's coming through the, the glass of the commentary position. Um, I don't know, give us a wave, JD. Are you down there in the uh, in the shade, mate, or...? Where are you at the moment? Yeah, I've moved, I've moved three times in 45 minutes in the shade, so we will call it probably game two and three from the grandstand, so we're in the, in the shade, but it's, 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 it's just hitting 32 degrees. Is it really? Oh, that's sweltering right. conditions for footy, by playing in Oz. Just had a look at me sundial. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks to Sky Sport too. It's been just great to... Provide an opportunity uh, to cover this. Uh, well, the team from the stream shop, likewise, helping out with uh, the broadcast. It's great to bring all this action to you live from across here in North Harbour. I've well, we got a chance to. Congratulations to Ash Barty. I see who uh, picked up the women's singles title at the Australian Open. First Aussie woman to do so in 44 years, I think it was, wow. JD. And you remember um, Yvonne Gulagong, eh, mate? Uh, back in the day. Gul uh, Gulagong would become Crawley. That's right. Yeah. Well, she was there to present the trophy to Ash Barty. So indigenous some... lady, proud indigenous lady. So tell us a little more about the All-Stars game, which is uh, is coming up. Uh, obviously, it's the it's, start of the ball rolling across the Tasman, and it's a great showcase of, of indigenous talent. It is, and it's about cultures and... Uh, you know, the NRL have done a great job in trying to keep the game alive. There's Apollo protocols that the boys are uh, in our Wahine tour having to go through it. So it's, it's changing every day. And some of our players, we've lost some of the players because they haven't been vaxxed and things like that. But it's at Parramatta Stadium, the, the new stadium in Sydney. And, you know, I was t talking to, to Kitty and he's, you know, some of the most of the boys available. But there's a lot of the boys like Jesse Bromwich and, and the likes that have had... Um, off-season surgeries, Dale, and yeah, so, but you know, one door shuts, another one opens, and we've got some, a lot of young talent coming through, so, yeah, we're Speaking hopeful of um, still, you know, Caelan Ponga and the likes, and yeah, it was a real showcase, spot, was but it's it, also it about a, our wahine, was it a draw it's about last our wahine, you know, wahine yeah. tour, you know, and uh, a good guy that you'd be uh, familiar with, or Keith, yeah, the coach, yeah, Keith Hanley, you know, uh, Born and bred in Waiheke Island. Yeah. We, we just haven't got Brandon Smith or Reese Walsh. Okay. Yeah, for well, reasons that have been publicised, but uh, yeah, the, we still feel a, a formidable team. Sure. Should be named this week, I think. I think we're naming it Wednesday. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, well, so looking forward to it, and it is a showpiece. Five years we've been uh, involved with that game, so uh, yeah. Well, I'll leave you to uh, to tell us who's leaving the field, please, uh, Monty. Uh, Connor Kakit. No, there's the Cook Island team. Uh, this man here is Isakali Nadal na Kamakama. Alrighty. He's the one that that this. Well, and don't uh, come, come on. Uh, come on, come on. You're coming on pretty good. Well, too. I'm trying, and, and look, as we see at the top of the broadcast, you know that there's something we we dearly try to do here on Sky Sport with myself and Dale nice. is try to get the pronunciation right. Uh, the effort is there. We we've got a bit of work to do in terms of getting it uh, succinct or down right to a T, but um, we do care. Yeah, and there's been some criticisms that um, uh, broadcasters across in Australia uh, don't make as much effort as we would expect. Um, uh, it, it's important here in Aotearoa that we do our very best because these are, these are whakapapa names. They all come with a history and a pride. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be dismissive of that now. It's just a little bit of a, a, a slowdown here and perhaps the connections from the cooks are being summoned. Uh, just talking about the high shots and the like. It's been played in good spirit, 26 points in it. Frustration can build, especially in 32 degrees on the track today. So he just wants things to, uh, to stay cool. He's had a good game too, Brent Newton. As we get back underway, 14 to play. So it's Fiji right in front of the posts and David Kummer. Unloads for, again, uh, perhaps a pre predictable run, but that's okay because often that conservative carry early in the set is what is needed to create the opportunity later in the six plays. Yusefa here, Tuiano. 15, Charlie Ringamoto. And now the ball is launched. It's worked for them before, and it could again, although uh, the twist with the ball is uh, unsuccessful. Uh, he's injured himself out wide, the Fijian winger. Uh, but he certainly wasn't far away from collecting four points there. Well, unorthodox, unpredictable. Uh, tackle two, yeah, yeah, kick for the corner. Yeah, like you mentioned, it has worked for them, but um, I do think there's better ways of doing it. But you climb high, you back yourself, you have a go. Just a little bit off scoring that. Did he lose position there? Did he go over the line? I think touch judge was on the spot to find out. And a mistake was made, Tania Lamai City is the man who had the ball in jersey number five. So two finals to come, if you've just joined us. This is Pacifica Youth Cup on Sky Sport, and today is finals day. These guys are playing for the back end of the 16s, but that's still a credit to them. Both the Cook Islands really did challenge uh, a couple of times, had a good one over New Air, I think early in the tournament, but they find themselves here in battle with Fiji. And uh, flying their flag proudly at the moment too, when you look at the scoreline, 36 points to 10, Fiji with another chance. Here they are, 10 metres out. We'll just get once again, I think a straightforward run first up. And it's into the hands of Tuyano. Good defence as they move in. To affect their work, Siapale Tito scored the first try in the match earlier today. Big number eight is William Vave. Tuyano out the back this time, and that's a turnover as well. And now the Cooks have it. Let's see who is available to be utilised. Shane Fa'aongo is away from one, away from two. Any runners? Well, Fiji are there in numbers. Three of them eventually corral Shane Faongo out of dummy half and peeling away as Tiatina, and he is in once again. Great play from the Cook Islands. Tiatina, I'm pretty sure it is the number two, but Faongo deserves some credit for the huge run and metre gain.
after the ball was turned over, 20 out from his own line. Oh, you make a break, you lock up, you're a half, and then you know against the, the flying Fijians, you, you, you're probably saying with seven to go, I'm not going to quite get there, but he never stopped, he pushed off, he kept pushing. You see the chin up, can I, can I get there? Not quite, he tries to hold him off, but it's the footwork of Tayatona, who, Alan Tayatona, look at this, look off the left, whack, beautiful. Dissected the two players that are over the line to score, a very nice try there for you, JD. Yeah, just the uh, the defensive lapses and the uh, errors that have crept into the, the Fijian effort of uh, are proving pretty costly. And uh, and it's good to see that there's uh, the ability from the Cook Islands and players to go the length of the field. And, uh, you know, once you're running and turning 70, 80 metres uh, on retreat and uh, you're caught on the back foot and uh, a well-taken try. Well, they showed some commitment too to run down uh, Fa'ongo, but... They did. In the end, Tatena gets up from the dummy half position. Like I say, it was a decent whack off his left leg as well to straighten. 42 points to 10. I don't want to be too harsh, though, on the Fijian squad. And like you say, big ups to the connections, Steve and the crew, who've managed to pull the team together at some cost, too, to get guys on flights, observing COVID protocols all the way, uh, accommodation meals, and, uh, and all the like. So hold your heads up, Fiji. The main thing is creating a platform for these young guys to wear the national colours and to feel a pride in uh, who they are and the pride of their, uh, their own families. But the same can be said of uh, the Timo Kukiaidini, who have been absolutely superb and one of the popular crew of the six teams taking part here in this long overdue tournament. So still 10 minutes to play. Love to see Fiji get hold of the ball and give it some air, have some fun with it, and get across the line. But the Cooks, well, they're hell-bent on keeping on going here and perhaps even aiming for the half-century. We'll see how they go. Out of dummy half and peeling up the metres there, straight up through the middle, looking to get some support. So they've been quite exceptional in their attitude here. And the final, back rower again, Brown. Down the right side, Fiji at sixes and sevens. And here is another opportunity. I think the number 11 will have enough to go all the way. And Alvin Chong Nee is there to add salt to the wounds, really, for Fiji. But again, need to give some credit to the purpose on show here and the intent the attacking abilities of this impressive Cook Island squad. Yeah, well, from a standing start, Chong Ni just showed some, some a great turn of pace. Bit of a swerve in between players. Presence of mind to hold that ball in two hands to ensure that the cover defence coming across wasn't going to have a play at it. You watch him here, grabs the two hands, he scores that try. But just before that, Leon Richard coming across, he's also the goal kicker. Leon Richard's been doing... Uh, a number of good things for this team too. Bit of an unsung hero. He's been playing in the front row throughout the tournament, but also play on the edge. Um, both those guys have uh, been, been very good in the second half as well. Perhaps we could uh, pay some uh, tribute to the coach of the squad. You mentioned Henry Tudor. Uh, of course, passed with Henry over the years. He's training the squad and he really is delivering the messages out to this Cook Island team. A very proud man and a, a great contributor to the Cook Islands Rugby League culture over the years. This man too. Yeah, I just, just want to give a shout out to Sponge too, uh, boys, a good friend of, of ours and, 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 and stalwart in the game, Tony, uh, you know, and yeah, and he was helping, instrumental um, in, in pulling a team together and being involved and unfortunately I think he was uh, booked to go to One Love, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so he, he couldn't make it here, and uh, he's got Fano down there, so he carried on regardless. But yeah, I just, you know, and uh, and in the in the part that he plays in the uh, Cook Islands Rugby League, yeah, another legend, just like uh, the beast himself, Kevin Edel. Well, that's a first for me. That is an absolute first when a man puts reggae before rugby league. We're in red, aren't we? So is he really well, is I he really doing that? But anyway, no, in terms of a rugby league to make brain. <laughs> He has got one of the best sponge. I think he was taking his kids and he was look just down there and he was looking after the mughals just to make him feel good. Yeah, yeah. You know he got his name? Yes, I, I believe I do. 
Is it oh, is it publishable? Is it oh wow? Is, or is it is, is it in house? We'll just we'll just leave it to those who know. Hey, we'll just. <laughs> Does he live in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants? Nah, not quite. Oh, it's not from that. All right. <laughs> but it's, it's to do with that ability to uh, soak up. Okay, we'll leave it at that then. Hey, you can sing. I've heard him sing um, uh, Engelbert Humperdinck songs. He can go. Got it to you, old cow. Run that to you. Sure have, mate. <laughs> Good connections, too. See, all that inside oil comes out. You wouldn't know that these guys have played for three days straight, right? It's something about finals day. Getting out, playing that one last time, perhaps in their colours. It's been good. It has been great, and you know, that would be absolutely drained if we are here in the commentary box, because the sun's beating down incessantly here at North Harbour. The beaches will be packed. Auckland anniversary weekend, and we gather on tomorrow. That's going ahead too, because of the well, it's on the water and yachts and boats and tugboat races. It's a real spectacle. And for its 122nd year, the Auckland Regatta, which will be on tomorrow. So plenty of people enjoying that. Leon Richards comes and takes that ball skillfully and he finds a hole in the middle here. Says, holy dooly, I'm on my way through. On the halfway line. Nice kid, this one. For only he's been very, very good. Quick play the ball, look out. Fiji, because they're coming at you once again. They're not going to stop this flying Cook Islander. And he's been quite exceptional throughout the tournament. Love the work. And congratulations to Kalani Peru Donaldson. That's his second try of the afternoon, and indeed, the half century is uh, eclipsed. But uh, I'm preferring to celebrate the attacking efforts at the moment of uh, the Cook Island squad rather than the defensive lapses of their opponents. Like we say it's been a long weekend. Whilst they'll be disappointed with the final scoreline, Fiji, uh, we know that they have uh, uh, done their best under the circumstances. A beautiful ball from Hidney Holmes. Uh, it skipped across a number of players in there. I think there's a bit, bit of an overline here. Uh, that run by uh, Kalani Peru Donaldson. Nice bit of work. So we'll see if uh, Leon Richard can convert and get the extras. Of course he can. Yeah, yeah of course he can. Well, perhaps it's not even the uh, the end of it yet. 54 points to 10. It's not something I would have anticipated. Remember last night it was a four-point split between these two teams. But uh, the Cook Islands have probably been into the coconut water this morning and they've come out firing. That's what makes it exciting today because the other two games are the games that played yesterday too. So the rematch in such a short time and then just strategic plays from the coach and position changes or even just the, the straight up preparation of the players coming to the right head in mind. I think that's going to make it exciting this afternoon. Well, we're looking forward to the Tongan development squad against Nui. That's going to be a fine final. And, of course, New Zealand Māori went down to Donga uh, yesterday. We'll have a chance to make amends in our 3 o'clock final. So still plenty of action. But uh, for the moment, let's just also be mindful that these guys are at the back end of what's been a very torrid game of rugby league and, and uh, very debilitating heat. The conditions here... John Devonshire has kindly been with us on the sideline, has provided some wonderful insights. Suggests it's 30 degrees at least on the track. I thought a little knock on there at dummy half, and it's the uh, way that Brent Newton reads the play uh, as well. Um, what's on the cards for these guys this afternoon then, JD? Uh, Fiji will go and have a kai and then jump planes and peel on back to their houses uh, around the yeah, country. Yeah, they've, they've got a big gap. They got a big gathering uh, this afternoon. Um, Steve Smith was telling me, Dale, and they'll, they'll unwind and uh, have a kai and enjoy each other's company, have a, uh, have a church session with today being the Sabbath, and then, then they'll make their way home. But um, yeah, so it's been a tough day at the office for the Fijian boys, and you know our, our, our game is quite cruel when you have no possession and momentum can be uh, 
uh, a huge roll-on effect. But um, well done to them, and we thank them for their uh, three-day effort, four games. And However, you can't take too much away from the Cook Island effort uh, this morning. It's been huge. John, when these teams have come together, win or lose, uh, they, there's a great photo opportunity of them together. What would you say of the importance of that aspect of this tournament? The whakawhanaungatanga, the networking that's uh, involved, the friendships that are made, even though you've been combatants just a few moments before, these are relationships that could be lifelong. Oh, it's, oh, I know cover, as part of the coverage, we don't probably take the whole uh, entire after-match um, celebrations, but they, they huddle together, they they pray together, they have a wire to, and they embrace each other, and, and that's one of my favourite parts that I love. You know, mm. and, and that'll happen after this game as we wind down. Even with a 50-point loss, they'll, you know, they'll they'll come together, and you know, it's that fuck of that you talk about, Dale. Yeah, you can see it in the photographs, so. And, uh, uh, of course, you too, Monty, in your career, you've, you've had some great old torrid battles with blokes who have become, well, maybe not close mates, but certainly guys you respect if you cross paths later in life. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the bond you get from uh, when you go to war against someone, whether that be uh, in the ring or even just on the field like this, you know, sometimes and throughout this, and we'll see today, there's mates versus mates, teammates normally, but against each other for your colours that you love and adore. As you see them coming out of their own end. Look at this. This is great stuff. This is Pacifica Rugby League at its best, though. He's made a break. <laughs> this is what we like. Go, boys. Go, boys. Chases on. Here Go comes him. Oh, he's flying. Yeah. He's got it again. Oh, that's too much, isn't it? Oh, and Alan. <laughs> so, so no. uh, he's able to put the icing on the cake. Well, that's an example of Pacifica attitude, isn't it? The Hooters gone. Well, go 100 metres and finish the game off an absolute More, more than 100 metres <laughs> from goal line to goal line. Ah, oh, that was fantastic. I love that attitude. Let's have a look at it again. Oh, look at the chase back. That's what, you know, you talk about effort, you talk about attitude. The chase back of the Fijians as well, when the whistle's blowing, it's all over. They were there. Cook Islanders were there. It's, it's, it's great. That's why we love what Pacifica Tournament and Māori bring together and and the efforts they have for their brothers. It's a brotherhood. That's fantastic. What a finish. You couldn't have scripted awesome. that. And uh, Taya Taina is enraptured with the opportunity to score a try right at the end. Well, many of the Fijian guys are slumped down, I think just absolutely drained. But uh, as I say, their faith is the cornerstone of their culture and many are embracing and giving thanks that they're able to come out of this in one piece. I don't know what this guy is doing. I think it's Regan Brown. Oh, the big fella's getting a oh, kick. He hey, now that's Pacifica Rugby League too, believe you me. And Dennis Sofala has now got on tape one of the worst efforts in his rugby league career. Uh, and a bit of humour. I think Regan Brown was on the ground. He'll find to the his football. way to TikTok as well. Oh, I think that's going to be a meme. But, gonna, he's not going to live that one down. Big Dennis had the chance of a lifetime. Viewers up and down the country. Here he is, testing out the wind. Ready for it. Oh, he's done the TikTok dance to go. <laughs> that is an absolute shocker. Good on you, Dennis. Uh, he'll be in fits of laughter too, even though he might have wanted to get the job done. Well, they got to 60. An amazing showing here today as these two teams come together. We'll stay with the pickies for a little while, you guys, because it is finals time. There's not to be a presentation, but... Uh, to John Devon, I just want to say thank you. John's going to work with us through the day, and it's been so neat to get some perspectives from you, JD, uh, through the final. Let's just talk through this uh, last little bit of action, shall we? Oh, look at it. <laughs> oh, hang on, we're getting oh, a rundown of the tries. That's very nice, too. This is um, <laughs> yeah. Peru Donaldson. He's got a few meat pies throughout this tournament, hasn't he? And uh, the next one is, uh, is, is Tia Tia, who's been superb. He scores the last try as well, so... They really turned it on for us today, the Cook Island squad. Absolutely superb. They sure did, Dale. Yeah. Hey, I've just joining me is uh, Henry Tudor. Uh, well done, Henry, and good to see you, mate. But uh, I noticed more water going on your head than the players. <laughs> well, uh, all I know, JD, is um, I'm the only one on the board who's uh, actually running waters out there, and that's what you should be doing as well, mate, for the Maldives. Yeah. I was trying to look for Sponge, but they said he's down at One Love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I'm not too sure about Sponge. Uh, um, 
we had a bit of a race and stuff, and I and I won out, so I'm the quickest water boy in the Cook Islands Rugby League. <laughs> hey, for Cook Islands Rugby League and the boys and the result, uh, Henry, great occasion in the last three days. Oh, fantastic! You know, uh, the the PAC uh, PYC competition has been awesome, uh, an opportunity for um, not only to showcase our, our young talent that's coming through, but um, also an opportunity to share our, our culture, our, our, our heritage, and an opportunity for the boys to um, recognise who they are and where they come from. Henry, I see that both the teams out there in prayer, they, they embraced each other, the supporters and the aunties and the ball boys all out there. That, that's what it's about too, isn't it? That's right, you know, absolutely. And um, I guess during this time, um, these uncertain times, it's, uh, it's been fantastic to uh, put an event on under the red light restrictions and um, you know it's, a, it's potentially a new normal for everybody and uh, the opportunity to get everybody together is what it's all about you're right thank you very much mate well done and awesome, thank JD. you to JD for uh, for bringing Henry Tudor a long time Cook Island rugby league man running the water out there this is the image that we'll leave you with and perhaps this is what we should remember is being gained here some solidarity some unity some respect of each other's cultures. I hope you enjoyed the first final here from finals day. We'll leave it there and thanks for tuning in. We'll be back with you for the uh, Cook Islands, sorry, the, um, uh, the Thorn Development Squad lining up against Newey. Kickoff time there at around about five past one. From me, Dale, from him, Monty, and from the rest of the gang here at North Harbour Stadium until we are able to uh, rejoin you. Uh, thanks for tuning in and watching coverage of the Pacifica Youth Cup of 2022, 58-10, and the Cook Islands winning against Fiji. Thanks for your company. We'll see you soon.